Hello and welcome along to this little video where I'm going to be talking about my favorite uh, feature from Commander 8.5. It's a feature I've been waiting for for quite some time. Um, it's the second time I've waited for this feature because uh, it also was the last BP Man symbol to be implemented in Commander 7 and it's now come to Commander 8 because it's a really important symbol. It's very complicated to build and you'll understand why uh, but very easy to use uh, for the end user which is why I want to talk about it. Um, it's often used to implement saga patterns which means what this does is it basically tries to undo something that's happened previously in the process using an event called uh, compensation throw that's then caught somewhere and then executes a task. Um, it's very very simple and I'm going to talk through it with this classic example uh, about a hawk emporium. So I'll talk through the example first and then I'll explain what we want to accomplish and then I'll build the compensation into it. So let's start at the very beginning. This is a hawk adoption process. So the way this works is pretty straightforward. We have a, a start event where someone fills in an application because they want to adopt a hawk who doesn't and it's potential that they're on Slack so they could get a Slack message or they're not and they might not. So if they are on Slack, they get a Slack message. They always get an email and eventually someone here checks whether they are uh, good enough or not. If they are, great stuff. The adoption process continues and hurrah, we have ado adopted a hawk. Um, another option would be that we arrive here, we send our Slack message an email, but unfortunately they are not good enough to adopt our hawk, so we go down here. And here's where we're gonna be spending our time because what we would like to do is we would like to make sure that if they don't uh, get accepted, that we let them know. And there's two ways um, that we can do that. Either they have a Slack message uh, and an email, or they just have an email. And this is um, quite hard to do because what I would need to build here without compensation is I need to build an XOR gateway here that checks which, well, an OR gateway to check which one was, in, uh, was called and then put the task there. Um, so we need to do a lot of double checking. It's also possible because of the way this task goes, which is actually quite interesting. It's also possible, let's say, that we get to this point and the Slack message hasn't actually triggered yet because let's say the service is down as an example, right? So we have here the Slack message, it hasn't actually executed yet, but we want to uh, tell them that unfortunately they're rejected. Um, interestingly, we don't want it to send a Slack message if the first one didn't succeed. So there's two things. Um, only if this task is executed and this task is executed do we want to send a follow-up. So um, how do we build that in a very easy way with one symbol? Well, let me show you. So the first thing we need to do is um, try and trigger a compensation. Um, just like all events in BPMan, there are throwing and there are catching. So the first thing we want to do is uh, create a throwing compensation event. Uh, if I put this right here, um, I'm going to then go select uh, compensation and throwing. It's the only one you can have as an intermediate event. What this means is it's gonna throw a compensation event. Uh, unlike a whole bunch of other events, what this deals with is the history of the process, what has been executed. It'll look for tasks that have a compensation catch event as a boundary event on there, and then it will execute the corresponding task. So how does that look? Well, the first thing is we have our Slack message here, which says, um, it posts to the Hawk adoption um, uh, thing, and it says, guess what, uh, whoever you are uh, uh, wants to adopt a Hawk because of the adoption reasons. Great stuff. So now we want to send a message to them saying, I'm sorry, but they're not getting a Hawk. I'm gonna copy this, I'm just gonna paste it, because most of the uh, thing is going to be undoing this, basically means posting a different Slack message. So if I open this, I'm going to say, okay, guess what? Uh, or let's just make this a little nicer. Let's say, sorry, full name, um, but uh, you cannot get a hawk. And because, now luckily we have a reason, we have a rejection reason that's added in the, in the form coming up. So we can say, sorry, uh, you can't have a hawk because of rejection reason. Great, so that's that. So now we know how to, how to undo this. Let's call this Slack rejection. Cool, and so how do we connect these two? Well, just like any, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's a boundary event. So I'm gonna add here a boundary event, I'm gonna pop it up here. 
I'm going to change this to a uh, compensation. Um, compensations are here, great, and I'll link it to this. There's a lot of really unique things about compensation. The first one is very simply that this dotted line is quite unique in VPMN because usually a boundary event will have a, a line going from here to here, let's say a timer event, which basically works by saying, if the, this time expires, we go up here. But this is unique because the compensation event only triggers after a token has left a task and uh, not while it's there. It's the only um, boundary event that triggers uh, after the scope has been exited. So it's quite unique. So what will happen here is it'll send my reject Slack message. So um, yeah, let's also try to do the same with the email. And the reason we can do that by email as well is because compensation doesn't necessarily have a one-to-one -one correlation. This isn't saying undo the task that happened. What actually this means is we're going to drop another boundary event. I'm actually first going to copy this email task and do the same thing again. So because um, multiple things have happened, the compensation can undo multiple things at once. So this is going to say send rejection email. Uh, so the original um, said, let's open this up. The original said, thanks for applying for a hawk. We'll let you know what you think. Um, this is going to say, sorry. Um, but you get no hawk because, and then we're going to have again, rejection reason. Okay, cool. And uh, close that. Super. And now we, as, as before, we need to link them. So this is going to be changed to a compensation event. Marvelous. And I'm going to click these here. Okay. And that's all. The really nice thing is that the, the compensation events themselves don't need any further um, implementation. The engine takes care of all of that. The engine will work out what's happened and just trigger them when necessary. This is why I, I quite like this because it does something incredibly complicated that would take some time. You would need to query to find out what's happened. But no, the engine already knows that and it'll work it out internally, which is really nice. So yeah, the only thing left now is to uh, give this a try. So I'm gonna start with uh, deploying this. Uh, let's deploy to Unstable Unicorn. Great, it's gonna take my two forms, cool. And uh, then we are going to uh, go and uh, start this process. I can start it from here, so I'll do that right now. Um, okay, so Hawk adoption. So we have here, uh, full name Reb Brown, uh, email is, there we go, Reb Brown at, Reb Brown Comunda at gmail.com. Reason being a Hawk owner, um, uh, I would like a friend for my pet rabbit. Seems like a reasonable reason to have one. I'm part of the, of the Slack channel and a be Reb is a beginner. Now Reb already exists to some degree. Uh, Reb um, has uh, a nice email right here. Uh, waiting for the, the Hawk stuff. And also Reb is part of the Hawk adoption Slack channel. So we'll come back and check on that in a few moments. So let's uh, run this. Okay, so that started an instance, so let's go. And um, oh, meanwhile, I'm gonna check if Reb has gotten an email yet. Okay, we, we have our, our Slack bot has already triggered. Guess what? Reb Brown wants to adopt a Hawk because as a friend for his rabbit. And we should have uh, an email as well, potentially. Uh, let's see if it is in, <gasps> yay, spam. So there we go. So uh, this looks safe. Um, yeah. So Red Brand is applying for a hawk, let him know. So um, let's just start this somehow. Uh, there we go, it's an important message. So yeah, there we go. So uh, great stuff. So Reb is very excited. The potential exists for him to adopt a hawk. So you can see so far we've gone through here. Let's go uh, open this task. And uh, let's see what we can do to uh, verify. Um, so I'm going to assign this to me. Here's my form that I have. Um, let's say, should they adopt the reasons Reb Brown, um, friend from my pet rabbit, not a good reason. That is, that is bad, subjection reason. Uh, the rabbit 
um, may uh, eat the hawk, a common problem. So let's um, click complete. And as I mentioned, what I expect to happen is we go down here, we trigger the events. Um, we should get an email then from, uh, oh, we have a second one. Great stuff. Sorry, Reb, but no hawk because your rabbit might eat, may eat the hawk. And on Slack, sorry, Reb, you can't get a hawk because the rabbit might eat the hawk. All very reasonable. As you can see what's happened here, we can see actually very easily down here in the, um, uh, uh, in the log here that we triggered the event. It then got caught by both of these catch events and subsequently triggered both of the returns before then going on to the end event and ending the process. So yeah, that's basically how that works. Um, it's a really important feature for um, distributed systems because often when something gets changed, if you want to undo it, it's actually a legitimate problem. Um, people need to figure out how are they supposed to um, undo changes that have happened in other systems. This is a really easy way to do it. It's visual, it's very obvious, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a great uh, way of, of dealing with that. There's also the fun thing of it's just a very easy symbol to deal with. Um, it doesn't require any additional context or any additional um, uh, um, uh, programming from you. And if you wanted to, you could even uh, be more specific about it because we can see here the compensation event also lets you select a specific activity that you want to trigger. You don't have to trigger everything all at once. Um, you could trigger just the things that this should, um, should uh, compensate, which is even more powerful. So you can have multiple compensations, not running in parallel like this, but running sequentially. There's a lot of options here. Um, this example is on GitHub, available for you to use, a link below, so enjoy that. And I hope that you, um, you get to use this wonderful new feature that I'm really delighted exists in 8.5. Talk to you again, bye-bye.